Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. students welcome today we discuss the importance need and relevancy of prospectus i am dr jaswant sen associate professor department of law mdu rohtak first of all as usual we discuss the learning outcomes what we learn from this discussion after this discussion you will able to understand the meaning of prospectus and how many type of prospectus shelf prospectus information memorandum and red herring prospectus along with relevant provisions under the companies act 2013 including disclosure approval penalties etc what type of disclosures we need to be introduce and what type of approvals we required to issue before issue the prospectus and what type of penalties are imposed if we not fulfill the requirement secondly to gain practical insights into drafting and reviewing a prospectus and know about the challenges and complexities involved in the process of issuing the prospectus third one after discuss the chapter of prospectus we develop the understanding as how prospectus are essential for maintaining transparency and investor confidence in the securities market basically when we invite the investors to invest in any enterprises any business they want to know the basic requirements of the business and all these requirements available in prospectus and on the basis of prospectus a prospective investors may decide either he or she invest in this particular business or not so in uh, prospectus play very important role to take decision either we invest in particular business particular company particular enterprises or not section 270 of the companies act 2013 define the meaning of prospectus any document the opening word of this definition define any document either that in the form of actual prospectus either that's in the form of information either that's in the form of invitation described or issued as a prospectus and includes a red herring prospectus referred to section 32 or shelf prospectus referred in section 31 both type of prospectus also include in the meaning of definition of prospectus which define in section 31 and 32 or any notice any circular any advertisement or any other document purpose is here inviting deposits from the public or inviting offers from the public for the subscription or purchase of any shares or debentures of a body corporate so very wide definition given in section 270 of the companies act 2013 regarding prospectus every type of invitation here include in the meaning of this prospectus the definition of prospectus now specifically provides that red herring and shelf prospectus also include in the meaning of prospectus and these documents also treated as prospectus 
and scope of this definition wide very wide and that includes securities instead of only share or debentures. Every type of securities include in this meaning not only shares and debentures but all type of securities include and for the same if you invite the public they are known as investors and they decide their decisions on the basis of the information refer in this prospectus. So, ingredients to constitute a prospectus very first there must be an invitation to the public. Invitation for what purpose? Invitation for investment purpose. Second, the invitation must be made by or on behalf of the company or in relation to an intended company. If you invite the public for on your own behalf, that is not serve the fruitful purpose. Here fruitful purpose serve if you invite the public for investment on the behalf of company. So, that is the second ingredient. Third one, invitation must be to subscribe or purchase the securities not any other thing. If you only invite for securities then you are investors that serve the fruitful purpose of prospectus. Invitation must be for public specific group that is depend on the nature of invitation either you invite the general public or either you invite the specific group of public. Invitation must be for investment. So, again and again this word indicate that the invitation through this prospectus only for purpose of investment. If you invite the public for any other purpose that not serve the fruitful purpose as laid down by the meaning of section 270 of the companies act 2013. So, which type of companies are allowed to issue the prospectus? or what type of companies permit to issue the securities without prospectus we discuss here in this slide. Section 23 to section 42 of the companies act 2013 deals with the prospectus and allotment of securities. Once you issue the prospectus the basic purpose here to issue the securities and how you allot the securities that is on the basis of the terms refer in prospectus or the information revealed in the prospectus that is decide. Section 23.1a define states that public company may issue securities to the public through prospectus public offer after complying with the provision. So, with this meaning of section 23.1a very clearly defined only public limited companies are allowed to issue the prospectus and this may word indicate that if public company interested to issue the prospectus then they issue the prospectus otherwise that is not a mandatory condition that is not a compulsion on the part of public limited company. And issue the securities to public through prospectus public offer after complying with the provisions and which provisions which referred by SEBI. SEBI is the regulating authority who decide either you comply the provision or not. So, on the basis of the issue direction by SEBI you issue the prospectus being a public limited company and public offer indicate that when you securities to the public that amounts to public offer. If you issue the securities or if you only invite the specific group of persons that is not may be convert may be not categorized may be not deals as a public offer. Section 23 states that for the purpose of chapter 3 public offer includes initial public offer, initial public offer basically IPO 
IPO is a abbreviation and the full abbreviation of this one initial public offer and another is FPO two type of securities one is FPO another is IPO. IPO means initial public offer FPO means further public offer further public offer indicate that company already issued the securities and that is the second time or third time or fourth time company issue the securities. IPO basically refer to initial public offer. So, further public offer securities to the public by a company or an offer for sale of securities to the public by an existing shareholders through issue of prospectus. So, so many ways to issue the securities one IPO, FPO, right issue, bonus issue, so many types here, but here for your knowledge point of view basically here IPO and IPO these are referring terms for issue the securities for companies. Matters to be stated in prospectus and what type of uh, information given in the prospectus that is here we define section 26 clause 1 define that every prospectus issued by company shall be dated and signed. Those who are responsible to issue this prospectus they must sign on this document and the dated word refer that on the face of this document clearly mention that on which date you issue this document issue this prospectus and this prospectus shall state such information, such information means as and when required as per the direction issued by the regulator what type of information required and set out such reports or financial information as may be specified by the securities and exchange board in consultation with the central government. So, here few agencies one is SEBI, another is stock exchange, stock exchange and another is central government or uh, these agencies are responsible for these securities because central government is the guardian of public money and through this prospectus when you invite the investors public when invest their hard savings in any company the central government being a guardian to check either you are hard savings in rightful direction or not either there may be chance of drawn this money or not. So, if money in the rightful direction that is also one of the aspect which deal by central government. So, these regulators which created by central government to check either the companies fulfill their functioning as per law or not. One is SEBI, stock exchange, central government, central government through ministry of corporate affairs check the functioning of these companies and regulators. So, you remember one thing central government being a regulator of this prospectus through their departments are responsible. Central government check money of the public should be in rightful direction, must be under transparency. This document make a declaration about the compliance of provision. So, this is the basic requirement um, from the side of regulators you must certify that you comply the provision of Companies Act 2013 and Securities Contracts Regulation Act 1956 and Security Exchange Board of Act India Act 1992 along with their respective rules and regulation. So, you must certify it. you comply the all provisions which required by these agencies. Rules and regulation basically refer that this power given to the statutory bodies to frame the rules and regulation. Along with this act which refer here you are bound to be follow the rules and regulation which 
establish or you may be say introduce or reveal or approved by these regulators and regulators are here SEBI and stock exchange. SEBI and stock exchange basically deals with the functioning of companies in every manner. So, SEBI is responsible for the same, stock exchange is also responsible for the same. They check either you fulfill the rules and regulation which required means as per the requirement of provisions you fulfill the requirements. Disclosure in the prospectus as per provision of section 26 clause 1 of the Companies Act 2013 and rule 3 of the Companies Prospectus and Allotment of Securities rules 2014. So, there is no any meaning of the rules without act and there is no any meaning of the act without rules. The rules are the supplementary and complementary to the main act, main provision of the law. So, they must be in consonance, they must be in consistency. If rules gave the different version and the provisions gave the different version, that is type of philosophy not allowed. Every provision must be spotted by rules and every rule must be spotted by provisions that is the basic requirement. And in this disclosure you gave the names, addresses of the registered office of the company. It means you clearly mention where there is a registered office of the company and company secretary which type of companies are allowed to appoint a company secretary that is the different rules are applicable. And as per the rules every public limited company who fulfill the minimum bar of capital they should be appointed company secretary as per requirement. And chief financial officer, auditors, legal advisors, bankers, trustees if any underwriters and such other persons as may be prescribed. So, every person who act on the behalf of company their disclosure we required in the prospectus. Either you act as an advisor, either you act as an legal advisor, auditor, financial officer, company secretary or underwriters. Underwriters basically such persons who take the undertaking for success of issue. In the capacity of underwriter they are bound to buy the securities up to that extent which they take the undertaking. And SEBI here issue the direction every public limited company must appoint an underwriter whose issue size is more than 100 crore rupees and underwriters are bound to subscribe up to 90 percent. If due to any reason the allotment not touched the minimum bar of 90 percent up to that extent the securities must be by these underwriters and they charge the commission for the same. Dates of opening and closing of the issue should be clearly mentioned in the prospectus on which date the issue open, on which date the issue close that is minimum 3 to 15 days are permitted to open and close of the issue. Minimum 3 days, maximum 15 days as per requirement you may be open the issue. And declaration about the issue of allotment letters and refunds within a prescribed time. So, for each and every act the time prescribed by the regulator and in a how many days you refund the money, how many days you allot the securities that is defined here in this time frame. Statement from the board of directors regarding the separate bank account open for all funds received from the public through prospectus. So, you are as per requirement of law open a separate account to uh, maintain the fund in this account which you receive from the public and 
this amount only used for this allotment account. Detail of all funds both utilized and unutilized from any previous issue in the prescribed banner. So, you must mention the detail. If you already invite the public and the money is available on the part of company and how much com uh, money company utilized and how much company money not utilized for this particular purpose, you gave the entire detail in this uh, particular uh, statement. Detail about underwriting of the issue. The underwriters are such persons who take the undertaking for touch the break even point that is 90 percent. As per SEB guideline, no any allotments are allowed unless you receive the 90 percent subscription. If due to any reason you not receive the 90 percent subscription, the remaining part purchase or buy by these underwriters and this undertaking is known as undertaking for by the securities. And for this undertaking they charge the commission and those persons who gave the undertaking they are known as underwriters. So, underwriters rate here means how much rate you charge for the same. Sometimes 2 to 7 percent this is rate and this rate is particularly settled by the parties. Parties are free to settle their own conditions. If company and underwriters set the rate of underwriting commission, that is the final. There is no any role of law. Law or the regulators define minimum and maximum bracket. Between this minimum and maximum bracket, you settle as per your own requirement, own terms and condition, on your uh, willingness. Amount of commission payable, etcetera. So, this area is totally free, being a parties under law of contract, they are free to settle their own conditions. The consent in writing, prospectors must mention the consent. Consent word in itself define that party should be more than 18 years. Who attain the age of majority, they are known as measures and their consents are valid consent in the eyes of law. So, consent clearly mentioned that the person should be a major. The consent in writing, being a student of law, you always remember that every document we required in written form. There is no any meaning of verbal communications. If there is a verbal communication that is not stand in the law, in the eyes of law there is no meaning of such communications. Your document should be in written form. S uh, consent of whom we required? Consent of directors, consent of auditors, consent of bankers, consent of experts. If they gave opinion, their opinion must be in writing. If any all the if any or all the persons named in the prospectus and of such other persons as may be prescribed. Not only that is the exhaustive list, uh, the complete list, the list is very lengthy and if any other persons required, their consent here be required as an essential part and without their consent there is no meaning. He being a student of law, you remember the written documents only accepted by the court. So, provide authority. This is the second requirement for the issue of the details of the resolution passed. In case of companies, we not act even a single step or we not take even a single step without the meetings and in the meetings resolution passed. So, resolution passed for issue of the securities and procedure and time schedule for allotment and issue of securities. These all things you must first obtain the approval from the approving authorities. Either that is the company, either that is the SEB, either that is the stock exchange, either that is the ministry of corporate affairs. So, accordingly you take the approval and approval of authorities 
are essential here before issue the securities and in this approval clearly mentioned time frame or how you maintain the separate account how you issue the securities in case of firm allotment in case of non subscription up to the mark so these all things here clearly mention in the approving uh, letter and the approving authorities must concerned about the same provide details of the capital structure of the company how much share capital of the company and in how many parts the share capital divided so each, each and every things you find out in this prospectus and prospectus also deals with the main object of public offer terms of the present issue and such other particulars like the interim use of funds so very simple thing here main object of the company basically that target on whom you receive the payment that's decided by investors on the basis of object i gave you one of the example here if one company established to manufacture the towels and one another company established to manufacture the medicine of cancer so in which company you apply the money that's decided by your own willingness if you interested to apply the money in that company who manufacture the towels uh, it means you decide as per the demand of market and if you invest your money in such companies who are ready to manufacture the medicine of cancer it means you decide as per the market forces in presently where your money save and where you money your money earn more money so lot of factors here who decide the investment decisions so 99% cases the investor decide on the basis of main object of the company and funds where required the company and what's the capital structure of company what's the management of the company so many factors here decide the fate of investment provide main objects and present business of the company and its location schedule of implementation of the project for example if you establish a company in haryana and the company's main purpose to mining the coal there is no any coal minings in the haryana so there is no any purpose of establish a company there so location of the company itself a deciding factor and schedule of the implementation of the project if you establish you want to establish a project and you invite the investors to invest in this particular project you must clearly mention what's the schedule of implementation of this project so that's the few things very important to decide your fate of investment either your investment in rightful direction or not either your investment or more money or not so what's the minimum subscription amount payable by way of premium or issue provide main object and present business of the company and its location and schedule of implementation of the project these all things mentioned in the prospectus and minimum subscription amount payable by way of premium issue of shares otherwise then or cash so each and everything you find out in this prospectus and prospectus is that document who decide either the investors invest their hard savings in particular company or not so detail of directors also mention in this document including their appointments and remuneration and such particulars of the nature and extent of their interest in the company so this particular word interests clear that some type of directors also have their interest in the company and some directors not have their any interest in the company 
interest here means monetary inst uh, interest, pecuniary interest, not any other type of interest. If you have your interest in the company, we presume that your advices are not impartial advice. So, partiality may be there. So, due to avoid this partiality, we required there should be no any interest of the directors in any company. If there is a any interest of the directors in the form of pecuniary interest, they must disclose before the board of directors, before the members of the company. And disclosure in which manner? Law defined in prescribed manner about sources of promoters contribution. Promoters are such persons who establish the company, in whose mind idea flourished to establish a company and they convert this idea into practical. So, what is the sources of their contribution and in which manner that is clearly defined in this document. And for the purpose of IPO, we already discussed IPO means initial public offer and this if already existing company, individual allotment details should be provided from the date of incorporation of the issue. So, date of incorporation is that date on whose company start their life. And if company is already a existing company and company issue the first time shares or the securities that is known as IPO, initial public offer. If company already issue the securities and company issue the second time, third time or fourth time to the securities that is known as FPO, FPO refer to further public offer. So, in the case of listed issuer company, these details should cover the 5 years immediately preceding the date of filing of the prospectus. So, this word indicate that listed, listed company basically refer to whose name in the list of stock exchange. So, that company is a listed company who already apply for deals in stock exchange, they are the listing companies and details should be covered the 5 preceding years, the date of filing the prospectus. From the date of filing the prospectus, last 5 preceding years, detail also should be mentioned if you are the listed company. If you are not listed company, then rules are different. The issuer company must disclose the number of and price at which each of the allotment occurred in the last two years before the prospectors providing details of the consideration in each case. So, in last two years how many securities you issue, what is the price you charge. So, e these details you must be mentioned if you are already a listed company. So, other matters to be stated in prospectus as per rule 5 of 2014 companies prospectus and allotment of securities rules states that prospectus must provide specific disclosures. When funds from share or debenture issuance will be used, you arrange the money from the allotment of securities either that is a share, either that is a debenture. So, you require disclosure when funds from you arrange from the issue of securities. Purchasing a business, if you use the fund for purchasing a business including a chartered accountant's report on the business financial and assets liabilities. Chartered accountants basically are the auditors in any company. If you obtain the auditor reports that in itself self speaking that the company have the funds to meet their liabilities, if company is not an insolvent company. If company is a solvent company, it means company have sufficient funds to meet their liability. So, these all details you find in the auditor's report 
and auditor reports given by the auditors and auditors are independent persons they are the chartered accountants and if you use the money for buying immovable property so you gave the entire detail of this dealing detail of vendors how much amount you use for this one nature of property and past property transactions involving interested parties interested parties means if there is a interest of the parties either being a board of directors either being a any other key managerial persons your interest must be disclosed before the company in the board of directors meeting or the in the meetings of members reports by the auditors and reports relating to profit and losses company is a profit making company or there is only a loss on the part of company the auditors report clearly mention auditor image immediately preceding the issue financial year previous year report and present year report both reports are here attached with this document this document in itself clearly define the real picture of the company and section 261 in which circumstance is not applicable as per section 262 section 261 does not apply in the following situations these situations here mention very first when issuing a prospectus or form of application to existing members or debenture holders of a company for shares or debentures if you already issue the securities and you further issue the securities in such cases this section is not applicable whether they have the right to renounce the shares or not under sub clause second of clause a of sub section 1 of section 62 in favor of another person when issuing a prospectus or form of application for shares or debentures that are or will be identical in that respect to shares or debenture previously issued and currently traded on a recognized stock exchange so in both cases the rules are different if you issue the first time the rules are different if you issue the securities second time the rules are different if your security already listed in any registered stock exchange the rules are different if you first time apply for listing the securities the rules are different section 261 and 262 deals with a different type of situations filing a copy of prospectus with registrar registrar roc is a one of the regulator who regulate the functioning of the company and this roc registrar of companies act on the behalf of ministry of corporate affairs and ministry of corporate affairs act on the behalf of central government so section 23 clause 4 requires that prospectus must not be issued by or on behalf of a company or in relation to an intended company without delivering a copy signed by every person named as a director or proposed director so in this document there should be a signature of whom signature of directors either you are a first director either you are already existing directors to the registrar for registration before its publication so no any company allowed to issue the prospectus unless first they take the approval from roc registrar of companies so this approval we required as a registration it means you require to be registered first this document before this authority and once you submit this document to the authority that's become a public document and registrar of company if gave the approval it means that's automatically prove that you comply the all provisions which required to be fulfilled up to that extent it means before issue the prospectus you need fulfill all the compliance 
section 23 clause 6 every prospectus issued under subsection 1 should include on its front page that registrar gave the approval registrar gave the approval on front page clearly mentioned this document already registered with the registrar of the companies and registrar of company gave the approval for the same list of documents required by this section to be attached with a reference or reference to statements within the prospectus that indicates these documents fulfill the all requirement. So, two things are very important. One thing you submit a copy to the ROC. Second thing you comply the all requirements. If you fulfill both conditions it means you serve the fruitful purpose of issue the prospectus then that is not challengeable in any court if you fulfill the these requirements. Section 26 clause 7 specify that registrar cannot register, registrar here means ROC, cannot register a prospectus unless the prospectus complies with the requirement. It means you need to be fulfilled the all requirement. First thing you submit a copy to ROC, second you fulfill all the requirements of this section and is accompanied by the written consent, third is here written consent. So, if I gave first here, second here, third here, it means if you fulfill these three requirements, you complete the entire process of issue the prospectus. If you fulfill these requirements in number of three, it means you complete the requirement as required by law. First submit to ROC, second comply with all provisions, third one you already obtain the written consent where there is a required. In the prospectus of which type of persons require either as a legal advisor, either as a auditors, either as a directors. So, these consent should be in written form. Section 26.8 states that no prospectus shall be valid if it is issued more than 90 days. It means you submit to ROC within 90 days from the date of approval. If you not publish this document, there is no any meaning of such documents. That is not treated as valid document. So, all requirements must be comply within time frame which defined by legal provisions. So, date is very important of registration, date is uh, date of issuing the prospectus is also very important. So, time frame play very important role in the functioning of law including a statement by an expert in the prospectus. Either you are a legal expert, either you are a in any capacity act as an expert. Your expert report, your opinion must be there in the form of statement. Section 26 clause 5 mandates, that is mandates that a prospectus cannot feature statement from experts who are or have been involved in the company's formation, promotion or management. Your expert advice we required as an independent experts. If you are the part of management and you act in capacity of expert, that is not serve the fruitful purpose. Expert should be an independent person not you act in formation of company, promotion of company or management of company. Expert must give written consent for their statement and not withdraw. If you gave your written consent and after that you withdraw, that is not so the fruitful purpose. Yet. You gave the consent, you must stand with your consent. You must give the written document, you stand with this written document before the issue the prospectus you must stand with the same and statement is in prospectus must be verified. 
penalty for contravention of section 26 we already know if you not comply the provision of law there is a provision of penalty and penalty for those who not comply who comply they are free from each and every rigorous requirements so penalty for contravention of section 26 it means 26 section is a mandatory section you must comply with the same section 26 clause 9 define that if a prospectus is issued in contravention of the provision of this section the company shall be punishable the important thing is here who is liable here company is liable who is punished here company is punished and how much punishment here company shall be punishable with fine which shall not be less than 50,000 rupees but which may extend to 3 lakh rupees so there two words are very important very first who is liable company is liable second word shall shall word it means the penalty imposed as a mandatory penalty how much penalty minimum 50,000 maximum 3 lakh rupees the on the part of company so the second point is here person second person is also responsible for the same every person who act here on the behalf of company for the purpose of company they are responsible first responsibility on the part of whom company second responsibility on the part of whom as a person who is knowingly knowingly means intentionally who is knowingly a party to the issue of such prospectus who know this fact the facts are wrong who know this fact these facts are not serve the legal purpose so shall be punishable there also we use word shall shall be punishable with fine which shall not less than 50,000 rupees but which may extend to 3 lakh rupees so major points here you remember or to note that one is here person is also liable second is here company is also liable both liabilities are here arise in case of any contravention of section 26 so section 26 is a mandatory obligation on the part of company on the part of individual section 27 clause 1 restricts a company from entering the terms of contract question is here who alter the terms of contract only parties with their consent alter the terms of contract or the objects for which the prospectus was issued except with the approval of company in a journal meeting through specific resolution special resolution so section 26 clause 1 restrict the company from altering their terms and notice in respect of resolution to the shareholders shall also published in two languages one in english another is local language so in two languages you publish the notice that's also requirement further that such company shall not use any amount raised by it through prospectus if you through prospectus if you arrange the money you not use this amount unless you serve for the particular purpose buying trading or otherwise dealing in equity shares for any other listed company if you use this money for specific purpose for whom you arrange the money that's allowed if you use for some other purpose that's not allowed so dissenting shareholders to variation of terms are to be given exit option those shareholders who are not agree with these terms or the alteration you must provide an exit option to these 
shareholders. That is defined in section 27 clause 2. The assenting shareholders who have not agreed to the proposal to vary the terms of contracts or objects, you must provide an exit option, exit price or in such manner and condition as may be specified by SEBI. First thing is here, you gave a scheme to exit, second as the specified by SEBI, these two things essential here. And dematerialization of securities are also mandatory as per section 29 clause 1, not withstanding anything contained in any other provision of this act. Every company who make the public offer, they must dematerialize their securities. Dematerialize here means electronic form. Such other class or public companies as may be prescribed, you must introduce your securities in dematerialized form. Shall issue the securities only in dematerialized form and Deposit Act 1996 is a mandatory provisions introduced for dematerialization of securities. Nowadays, as per the requirement of this act, all securities must be in dematerialized form. Section 30, advertisement of prospectus. When a company publish an advertisement for its prospectus through any means, the advertisement must include the following details. These are the details which required as per section 30 if you advertise the same. Information about the company object, second detail about the liability of its member, either liability of members are limited or unlimited, the amount of share capital, how much amount of share capital names of signatories of the memorandum, the number of shares subscribed by the signatories, those are subscribers, an overview of the company's capital structure. These all details you must clearly mention in the prospectus as per section 30 in the advertisement. Deemed prospectus defined in section 25. A prospectus, requirement of prospectus are very rigorous under the company act in order to avoid the issue of prospectus and practice followed by the companies was to issue share through intermediaries. Section 25 covers documents issued by the intermediaries and issue houses. So, section 25 clause 1 offer document as a prospectus. Section 25 clause 2 evidence of public offer. So, section 25, 26, 29 these are the important sections. Section 25, 3 modification to section 26, how we modify the terms. Section 25 clause 4 signing of offer document. When company makes the offer, the document mentioned in subsection 1 is valid if signed on the behalf of the company. If you sign on the behalf of company, that is valid and minimum two directors sign on this document. If less than two signs, there is no any meaning of such the same. Shelf prospectus is defined in section 31. For those companies who have large infrastructure projects and cost efficiency, the Company Act 2013 introduced the concept of shelf prospectus in section 31, enabling multiple stages of securities issuance without the need of separate prospectus filing in each and every case. The company shall also file information memorandum or new charges created if any ch change in financial position. So, shelf prospectus basically where company issue more than one type of securities or more than one securities in any financial year. Red herring prospectus defined in section 32 means a prospectus which does not include complete particulars of the quantum of price of the securities included in therein. A company proposing to make an offer of securities may issue a red herring prospectus prior to the issue of prospectus. 
must file with uh, at least three days before the issue of prospectus to the ROC. And the, these obligations are same if you issue the red hearing prospectus or the other prospectus. And a brief prospectus means brief prospectus that is defined in section 2 clause 1 means a document containing such salient feature of the prospectus in brief when you issue the detail of the company that is a brief prospectus. Liability for unto statement in prospectus that is section so many cases here who deals with the liability of the promoters who are responsible or the directors who are responsible to issue the prospectus and both type of liabilities are arise here civil liability and criminal liability. In case of untrue uh, statement referring the prospectus, every person who is a director of the company at the time of issue of the prospectus, every promoter of the company and every person including an expert who has authorized to issue the prospectus. So, the liability arise civil and criminal on the part of everyone who is responsible to issue the prospectus and criminal liability defined in section 34 and minimum of 6 month imprisonment and maximum of 10 years and amount also of the up to the fraud amount or maximum 3 times of the value of this amount. So, this is the penalty defined in section 34 criminal, section 35 deals with the civil penalty. Civil penalties also relates with this untrue statements, punishment under section 36 for fraudulently inducing persons to invest money and shall be liable for action as defined in section 447 of the Companies Act. So, other related provisions of the prospectus section 37, 38, section 40, section 447, they are also deals with the prospectus. Now, we summarize this discussion of prospectus. Every prospectus is an important document in the context of raising capital through public offers. It means you invite the public to invest their hard savings in a company. So, two things here, one is that is a document, second invite the public. Compliance through this document you comply the provision of Companies Act 2013 and comply the requirement of SEBI. SEBI being a regulator issue the direction regarding the same. Misstatement or omission both are punishable. That leads to legal consequences of the directors, promoters or etcetera. Understanding prospectors preparation and regulatory aspects is essential for the professionals in corporate law, finance and security regulation. So, this is the discussion about the same. Thank you.